<clears throat> well, what an interesting situation we have for you today here. Beep, 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 at the court of the EDI jester. Um, liberal values, right? Tolerance, okay, equality, all the liberal values, right? Not the far left nonsense, but the liberal values and like the labor value, the original labor values about tolerance and equality and class analysis and all the stuff that goes with it, you know, that stuff. The important stuff that goes where we are. I think it's important. You may not, but I think that's really important. When those values are tested and people that believe in those values are tested because they have to apply those values and uphold those values for somebody that they may abhor, it provides us with a great example of a knife's edge clash. Right? Because if you are not willing, when it comes to free speech, to stand there and defend someone who speaks things that make you feel like the world's not worth living in. If you're not happy to defend people who spout things that you would want to shut them down for, if you're not happy to defend those who do not hold your views and their ability to speech, speak, then you, then you are not a free speech advocate. You are not somebody who believes in liberal values. And we've got an interesting case here with Nigel Farage, right? Now, you may like, you may dislike Nigel Farage, it's immaterial. Right. Nigel Farage has been and has had an incredible career, whether you like it or not. Not in Europe, are we? And right now, looking at what they're up to, that was the right decision, by the way, by the English people and the Welsh people and the Scottish people and the Northern Ireland people to get out. We voted. You know, the upper classes thought this is never going to happen. The middle classes, the upper middle class, no, this will never happen. People never vote for this. And then suddenly, suddenly they realised. And whoa, we ended up out of Europe. Now, whether that's a good thing or whether it's a bad thing, it's going to take decades to sort out. But certainly it's done now, even though people keep ribbing it on about joining again. And if you look at what they're doing, Europe, stuff they're doing on their social goals and all that, dear God, we made the right decision. What next, I ask myself? What next? Well, next, we've probably got five years of nonsense with Labour, and then we'll get a Conservative government in that's actually made up of Conservatives. But Nigel Farage, love him or loathe him. Love him or loathe him has been a success. You can't argue with that. Oh, but maybe he's not a very nice man. If that's, if that's what you think, that's okay, you can think it, right. That's the first thing. Second thing is, money is speech, right? And not only that, in the digital world in which we live now, and this fact that we're moving towards digital currencies, we must never let cash die, ever. We must not tinker with the black market, right? I.e., you know, do me windows, mate, and I'll bung you 40 quid. You know, don't ever, think that messing with that is going to be a good thing. It's not. Right, because lots of people in this country only survive because of the black market. Lots of people in this country only survive because of it. And sometimes the people who need it the most. Right? Nigel Farage says he may have to leave UK after bank closes his accounts. Now, I don't know why the bank closed Nigel Farage's accounts, but I do know that I've been threatened with something similar. And I do know people that have lost their bank accounts or lost their PayPal account or lost the ability to play. If you remember, this happened to the Free Speech Union. So I've got the article here from The Telegraph to give you something to consider today. All right? Because this very much is, very much is about equality of arms. It's about equality of arms. Right? Because if they can do it to Farage, they can do it to you. So for those of you sitting there gloating... That's a very short-term view. Have a gloat, by all means. Oh, it couldn't have happened to a nastier chap. Go on, gloat away. But don't think for one second it can happen to you because it can. I had to change payment provider because they threatened me. Right? And that's just me, little old me. Right? Trying to make a living. You don't think it can happen to you, it can happen to you. Former UKIP leader says personal and business accounts with major retail bank closed because of commercial decision. Nigel Farage has said he may be forced to leave Britain after his bank closed his account and others refused his custom. The former UKIP leader said his personal and business accounts with a major retail bank have been closed because of a commercial decision and other high street firms have refused to allow him to transfer his funds to them. Now, there's some hyperbole there. Go talk to Wise. They seem like a good account to me. Mr Farage told The Telegraph 
he may have been the victim of a blatant corporate prejudice because of his campaign for breakfast or fallen foul of politically exposed person. Rules designed to lower banks' exposure to bribery and money laundering. The government's going to have to deal with this, right? They shouldn't be able to do this at all, right? Unless the law has been broken and it's been proven. Asked what he plans to do in response to his accounts being closed and debit cards rendered defunct, he said, leave the country, question mark. I haven't decided I've really got to think about this. The decision comes after other right-wing figures, including Richard Tice and the leader of Reform UK, and Toby Young, who established the Free Speech Union, said their, account, their accounts had been closed or restricted. In a video posted to his Twitter account on Thursday, Mr Farage admitted his bank gave him two months' notice. Two months' notice that it was closing his accounts. He was refused to name that he has refused to name the bank, which I think he's wrong to do. Um, and said he was speaking to lawyers in the hope they can convince it to restore his access. A bank can close a customer's account at any time and for various reasons, sometimes without notice. Under the payment accounts regulations, banks can close an account if a person has knowingly used or attempted to use the account for legal purposes. This is them, this is them dishing out a punishment before a crime. See what it is yet? The bank can also take action if incorrect information was given when applying for the account or the account holder is no longer legally a resident of the UK. Fair enough, right? Unless that incorrect information was by mistake or the person didn't understand what they were doing, which I imagine the bank would treat on, a, on an individual basis. There is also increased scrutiny from banks regarding politically exposed people. Individuals who are more susceptible to being involved in bribery or corruption because of their profession or position. Under money laundering regulations, banks are required to apply enhanced due diligence to politically exposed individuals to ensure that they are not using their institution for money laundering or accepting cash from illegal sources. That might have been fit for purpose, pre-social media and the internet. It's not fit for purpose when they are now able to label anybody, anybody as politically exposed individuals because they happen to have a popular YouTube channel, for example, or because they happen to have a popular substack or a popular whatever it may be. Yep, this law is going to need looking at. Rishi's not going to do it and Labour certainly aren't going to do it. All they want is a great big overarching state that's going to control your life. So, In 2018, the Financial Conduct Authority, the City Watchdog, said it was aware that some banks no longer offer services to categories of customers they deemed to be at high risk of money laundering. Mr Farage said, I got a phone call a couple months ago to say we are closing your accounts. I asked why. No reason was given. That should be illegal for them to do that. I was told a letter would come which would explain everything. The letter came through and simply said, we are closing your accounts. We want to finish it all by a date, which is around about now. No, you shouldn't be able to do that. I didn't quite know what to make of it. I complained. I emailed the chairman. A lackey phoned me to say that it was a commercial decision, which I have to say I don't believe for a single moment. So I thought, well, there we are. I'll have to go and find a different bank. I have been to seven banks and asked them, oh, could I have a personal and business account? And the answer has been no in every single case. Go and read the whole article. Go and listen to Nigel talk. Now you can disbelieve him. You can say he's full of it. Go ahead. Right, stick your head in the sand. If you want to do that, stick your head in the sand. We're living in a time where f change is coming fast and really furiously. You know, it's, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. What we thought was how things were going to be is not how things are going to be. And if we need to get used to the fact that we're living on a roller coaster, not a merry-go-round. All right? So governments are going to have to get up pretty sharpish if they're going to stop this from happening. So you've now got the likes of YouTube, Patreon, any other organisation that decides that what you have to say they don't like. Usually, possibly decided by one person sat in front of a sat in front of a screen in California or wherever, right? Or in you know London, going, "Go on, I don't like what this bloke says. Let's shut his account." The government needs to do something, and they need to do it quickly, right? Because what you're going to see, what you're going to see, is that this blob, if you want to call it the blob, I think that's a good term, any rate, the blob. Uh, if it's the blob, if it's the blob that's doing it, if it's this idea that people have to be controlled and people have to be told who they can bank with and who they can't, and they can't say this. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a do coming up about the book, Transpositions. You know, the one with Sarah Fillimore wrote and the work was done for, the, for, for the, um, all the drawings and stuff and all the graphics in it were done by Mole at the counter, Mole at the door. You know, it's, and I'm going to see it. And I booked it on Eventbrite and Eventbrite have cancelled their, their meeting. Right? Can you see what it is yet, folks? Okay? Talk to your MP. 
They need to pass laws that mean that people that offer services, offer services cannot do this. End of. End of. Okay? Then we'll look at why would that be difficult. Not the other way around. We don't go, let's wait for it to be difficult, then we'll do the law. Get the law in, and then the problems the law causes will mop up after. That's how it all works, isn't it, most of the time? Anyway, you've got to have a look. If you don't like Farage, fine. But if you don't think this can happen to you, then you truly are living in cloud cuckoo land.